With less than two weeks until the release of the iPhone 15 lineup, features like USB-C, the periscope camera, the new action button have been flying around the top grapevine like never before, and in this video, I take you through everything you need to know about the iPhone 15s, plus the latest updates. Buckle up, and let's go for the ride. First things first, let's talk about what you'll be getting from a build and design perspective. For the most part, Apple carries on with the same form factor we've grown accustomed to over the years, with the smaller of the two variants, in this case the 15 and 15 Pro, coming in at 6.1 inches and the 15 Plus and 15 Pro Max coming in at 6.7 inches. Speaking of the Pro Max, there have been rumors pointing to a name change to the iPhone Ultra, but that's most likely going to happen with the iPhone 16 Pro Max. When it comes to changes on the chassis, we are most likely going to see slightly rounded edges and smaller bezels compared to the square-like ones we've seen in the previous Gen 14. We'll also see the addition of a dynamic island in the non-pro models which had a notch in the previous Gen 14s. If you'd ask me, I think it's a good upgrade for the regular iPhone 15 users despite the fact that dynamic island received a fair amount of slack a few months after its inception in the 40 Pro lineup. Moving along, the action button is another upgrade that we'll get to see and it replaces the good old mute switch that's been there on the iPhone since forever. In case you're wondering what its purpose will be, it will be customizable and you can assign it any command of your choice. In my case, I plan to use it for quick camera access. Comment down below what you'll be using yours for. Compared to what we've seen in previous years, this year's color palette is more on the subtle side but in saying that, as is Apple's tradition, I won't be surprised if you saw either the gold or red colorway sometime in Q1 of next year. Long story short, this year we'll be getting the Space Black, which is usually my go-to, Silver, Deep Blue, Titan Grey and they'll all be coming with color matched braided USB cables. Speaking of USB cables, Apple is finally switching to USB-C cables, which obviously means the ports are switching from Lightning to USB-C, and this was a wish many iPhone users wanted to come true, putting in mind most devices use USB-C and having to carry a separate charging cable for your iPhone will now be a thing of the past. Finally on the design, changes on the frame of the Pro models will come with a titanium build, which explains the possibility of a price increase whereas the regular 15s will carry on with a stainless steel frame. Moving away from the changes that take on most of the physical work to the changes that carry the brain of the phone, the regular 15s will now run an A16 Bionic chip whereas the Pro models will run on the A17 Bionic chip and if you'd ask me, only tech nuts would be able to notice the difference but for the average consumer you most likely wouldn't notice any difference. When it comes to the operating system, you'll be getting the iOS 17 and having given the developer beta a test run already, new features like standby mode would be a joy to use for most people. On the contrary, what the regular 15 users would enjoy so much is remaining on standard Wi-Fi 6 while their Pro counterparts switch to Wi-Fi 6E. In saying that, this shouldn't be that big of an issue as the difference is so negligible and again, techies are the ones most likely to notice the difference. As for the storage, the 128GB capacity has been scraped off and all units will start with 256 gigs of storage. From a personal standpoint, I think it's a good move more so from a creator's perspective. Moving back to the surface, like mentioned earlier, the display will be getting smaller bezels, but this will only be on the Pro models, shrinking from 2.2mm to 1.5mm. For the most part, the display specs are set to remain the same, apart from the display driver integrated chip, which switches from a 40nm technology to a 28nm technology, and this will help reduce the amount of power used by the display. Going down memory lane, I've liked how we've been getting smaller screen space since the days of the iPhone 7. Moving on to the camera, the changes continue to ring in and what on the street is, we are set to see an upgrade more so on the primary lens with the aperture dipping from f1.8 to f1.7, which isn't that big of a difference but if you know a thing or two about cameras, the lower the aperture the more light you get into your shot and in the case of the Pro models, that also means less noise in your shots. Speaking of less noise, the 15 Pro Max is set to go even farther when zooming in with the introduction of a periscope lens which will allow for up to 6x zoom up from 3 times in the previous gen Pro models. If you'd ask me, the upgrade is very much welcome but nothing compared to the 10X in Samsung's top of the line flagship, the S23 Ultra. While it's a good upgrade, the silver lining on this cloud comes with a slight setback for those who will buy the iPhone 15 Pro Max models, and this is because of logistical issues with Sony who won't be able to provide the image sensor used by the Pro Max in time for it to ship with the rest of the models. What in the Ted Grabbine indicates a 3-4 week delay which will see the Pro Max deliveries come between the 6th and 13th of October. Moving along, it would be an absolute travesty if we didn't talk about one of the most contentious issues in the previous Gen 14s and that is the battery life. 
Starting with the biggest change in this department, the infamous lightning port. This has been met with so much excitement, especially for the Apple fanboys and girls. Something to note though, it wouldn't be the same across all models. Rumors suggest the regular models will be coming with USB 2.0, which will have slightly slower charging and data transfer speeds, compared with the Pro models which will have USB-C ports with Thunderbolt capabilities. And while on the subject of speed, there's a likelihood the charging speeds will be bumping up from 27 watts to 35 watts, and this will exclusively be for the Pro models. Still on charging, a bump from 7.5 watts to 15 watts in third party wireless charging accessories thanks to the new G2 standard is another change we are set to experience in the Pro models. Apple will also be making the cable slightly longer and this has definitely been received well, putting in mind most people had to buy third-party cables just to get that extra length while charging their phones. With all these upgrades, it would make more sense if you also got an increase in the milliamp power capacity and Apple are not disappointing. All the iPhone 15 models are set to receive an increase in capacity and Apple goes even a step further to try and cap the issue with maximum capacity degradation. Rumor has it the iPhone 15s will receive a stacked battery layout for faster charging and overall longevity of the battery. If you've been an Apple fanboy or girl for a while, you might remember this technology from when Apple used it in the battery of the 12-inch MacBook back in 2015. While I haven't experienced any issues with my battery, hopefully these upgrades make the overall battery health and longevity of the 15 lineup better. Moving along, for those who've been buying iPhones for a while, I'm sure you know the prices for the most part are usually quite steady, but rumor has it in this year's models we'll be seeing a price increase but just in the Pro models. The figures being thrown around are a $100 increase in the Pro and a $200 increase in the Pro Max and it stacks even more when you start to spec them out. Sources say a fully specced out Pro Max could easily cost more than an M2 MacBook Air. If you'd ask me, the 256GB would be a good sweet spot because of the price. Now, some of you might be wondering why the increase in price. In my opinion, the change to a titanium frame which is more expensive compared to stainless steel and the introduction of a periscope zoom play a big role in the price bump. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section. When it comes to accessories, they are a big contributor to Apple's overall yearly sales and with reports alluding Apple is planning to boot the leather case, then add the hidden sales from the lightning cable, you might think Apple is set for a huge cash dip in this department. But with Apple's MFI certification program, the new USB-Cs can simply be carried over to it and the cash flow continues. As for the leather cases, rumor has it Apple will be switching to vegan leather, which in my opinion is more eco-friendly. Well, there you have it. Although not entirely confirmed, the updates on the iPhone 15 lineup look to take the iPhone experience a notch higher with updates like the periscope camera, a new USB-C port, energy efficiency with a new 28 nanometer display, driver integrated chips, just to name but a few. In a few weeks time, I'll have my unit for an in-depth review, so if you found this video helpful or enjoyed it, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and click the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new video. And if you're looking to upgrade to the iPhone 14 Pro, this one year review will give you some insights on what to expect. Until then, people of the internet, I'm signing out. See you on the next one.